Hello and welcome back to the Berg's Dip Reviews channel. Today I have another topic video for you and that is going to be called the Nasal Snuff Mystery. So I'll explain that in further detail in a minute but we're gonna pack a lip of Copenhagen Southern Blend experimenting with a background light since it's pretty gray outside and not letting much light in at the moment. So anyway, I'm going to try and condense this a little more than my previous topic video as that went almost 19 or 20 minutes but um, anyway I for a long time have noticed that and, and especially more recently there's been some added chatter which has prompted me to make this video but the what I'll call American market uh, dry snuffs brands that would be made by American Snuff Company, Swisher International, or U.S. Smokeless, and those brands would include things such as Bruton, uh, Honey Bee, Two Bros, um, Railroad Mills, Peach. Um, I'm just trying to th run through some others that I've had. Navy uh, and dental w.e. garrett and sons all of those are what i would say are you know some people would say american scotches for simplicity i'm just going to call them american style dry snuffs that is the bulk of what you will find in a brick and mortar store if you're going to find any dry snuffs in america that being said there is limited distribution in America of Silver Dollar, Toke USA, and a brand that I actually have had, which is called Dark Horse, made by some uh, almost unheard of tobacco company that made, if I remember correctly, like it seemed like they were into low end like pipe tobacco and rolling tobacco and decided to make nasal snuff for some reason. But those are the only European style dry snuffs that I know of that are available domestically in store. Not talking about online ordering, but stuff that actually has distribution in America. And, oh, and well, and the one that's sitting right here in front of me, McChrystal's, which I did find in store. How did I leave that out? Um, anyway, so I have, uh, as soon as I had, I guess it was Silver Dollar Vanilla was the first European style dry snuff that I had. And I uh, immediately noticed differences compared to the American counterparts. Um, it, it just overall seems like it's meant to be taken nasally where when you're taking Bruton or especially a sweetened American one, like uh, Peach Sweet Snuff or Buttercup or something that is heavily sweetened, um, what I would do in videos, not and European, I know it's, it's intended to be taken nasally, but when I would do the American Snuffs, I really d did not know what uh, what I was doing for the large part. Um, I was following what I had seen other YouTubers do. Um, I believe Winnington, as his full review channel, when he did find a dry snuff, he did it in the same fashion, which was first take it nasally, um, and then dump a little bit in the, the cap that you get with that and just toss it in your lip. Um, and that is for the American um, style dry snuffs. So I really never knew whether that was correct, incorrect, or what the whole story was. Um, but as I understood it, there was a portion of the elderly population 
we'll say, in mostly the South and, of course, in Appalachia as well, um, that dips the stuff. So, this has always been like some kind of, I don't want to say argument, but, um, you know, months later I would get comments on these videos, why are you dipping this stuff, and, you know, and other people, oh, my grandmother does this, and, and, you know, so I was trying to make a video in which I could express my thoughts on this and hopefully get some info from people out there that do have, maybe you have family members or have seen this, because I, I'm kind of curious as to how they go about doing it, because when I have tried this, it it is incredibly difficult to really keep it in your lip because it's it's powdery and then the introduction of saliva turns it into like a mud-like consistency. And although the flavor is actually pretty decent, it it's kind of uncomfortable. And if you're not prepared, possibly might make you, you know, a little sickened just by the consistency. Um, and, but, but the thing is when you, when you do have to spit, it's not like you have a, a big clump of dip in your lip. It's just, it's all kind of fine and powdery and it, it just kind of gets spit out. So I have also heard from Dirty Pat Walsh instances of just taking a slight amount of it and rubbing it on your gums. Now that could be possible, but that doesn't solve one important question is the fact that American style dry snuffs are sold in mass quantities. Okay, so for example, this nasally intended McChrystals bought domestically here in the U.S. is 0.31 ounces. A standard, well, a standard can of dip is 1.2, but that's not really an easy comparison because this is moist and this is dry. Um, so 0 0.31 ounces comes out to like 8.8 .8 grams roughly after rounding. The small size of American dry snuffs, about that big, um, tall, round, cylindrical can, 1.15 uh, ounce container, which translates into 32 grams. Now, most dry snuffs in Europe are sold like in five, 10, 25 gram containers, and you know, with 25 could be considered a large size. This is 32 grams, and you know, after converting, and that would be the pocket can. Then you go up a size to what they call a thrift can. You can see images of this around the web and on. I believe you, if you search snuff thrift can, you'll see some info pop up from wholesalers and whatnot. But if you go onto Swisher's website, their corporate website, where they have all their products, they will show their dry snuff products in both sizes. And that is a 4.65 ounce can. And it is, I would say, at least that tall. It is very tall. Um, I think Dirty Pat Walsh got a large can of... I forget which kind he got. It might have been two bros, but I'm not sure. Um, and he, he got that sent to him, of course. But uh, anyway, 4.65 ounces of dry snuff translates to 132 grams after rounding it up. Um, huge. Absolutely huge. It would be like a lifetime supply nasally. Um, so... That alone makes me know for a fact that there has to be some oral use of the stuff. To because who would who would buy that on a regular basis and nasally? I mean, there wouldn't be enough time in the day to possibly even if you were doing it all the time to consume all that. Um, other other things. Um, American dry snuffs usually very, very fine and powdery. Um, not that not that McChrystal's isn't, but 
it's still much easier to work with. It's mentholated. None of the Americans are mentholated at all. Um, it's not even something I, I was familiar with until exploring the others a, a bit. It's also, the American styles are very strong, uh, meaning it's, they seem to have high nicotine and almost every time, and I probably, I mean, I, I of course was a bit of a beginner with this stuff, but I had reviewed quite a few of them and every time they would no matter it seemed like no matter how light i could possibly sniff the stuff it would it would go all the way up and, and hit the back of my throat and you know i would i would get i would get shit from uh you know regular dry snuff people but at the same time they may not have even ever tried any of these so um that that's kind of my basis for for thinking this way um also some of the the sweetened ones are not necessarily easy on the nose once you've sorry about that had a low battery notification so that's cue for me to wrap things up sooner or later um but some of the sweetened ones like i mentioned like honeybee when you sniff it, it's it's not that pleasant, and then when you dip it, you actually have a, a nice sweet flavor to it. So, you know, that's a, that's another reason why I'm thinking this, um, but it mostly is the packaging size. In addition, this can of McChrystals actually says nasal snuff on the back, and this was bought here in the U.S., um, the others, I don't know if they have a tax class on there or not, but they all have the same warning labels. Uh, this has smokeless tobacco is addictive on both sides, but the the American dry snuffs have the mouth cancer warning label, as would as would dip. Um, I, well, they alternate them, of course, but they they do have that as well. Um, I only ever asked one time in store about you know, who buys this, and they, they said, you know, older people. So, I suppose my final question um, would be, oh, I forgot to add one more thing. I was reading one time, I can't find it again, on a snuff forum where somebody actually wrote in to Swisher and asked why is there a mouth cancer warning label on a product that's supposed to be used nasally and they responded something to the effect of it's not supposed to be used nasally um our customers use this as dip but I, they probably use different wording but that was the gist of it um unfortunately i can't find it anymore and it was probably it was quite a while ago and i, I can't locate it so anyway i'm not saying you can't use it nasally because you certainly can and it certainly works it's just that i i am i am very convinced up at this point that the use intended by the manufacturers of american dry snuff american style dry snuff let's make that clear is actually to be dipped the question that i would hopefully be able to determine is how about do people go and dip this um i didn't include the history which is essentially that in the early days um people would chew down some a twig or something dip it in and have that sit in their mouth and that evolved eventually into dip today that that i found out well i had heard that before but American Snuff Company has a history section on their website, and at one point that was included on there. Um, however, my question is, how, how is it that people are going about dipping it today that are actual everyday users of the stuff? Um, you know, are they grabbing a pinch, which is very hard to do? Are they pouring it in a cap? Are they spooning it in, you know... Do they leave it in long or, to, you know, because I couldn't really ever figure that out personally. Um, 
suit and tie has been has been curious about this and it, when he got some railroad mills and was seemed seemed very surprised by it um so yeah so basically if you have anything relevant to add please let me know leave it in the comments um if you've got family or or other folks that that do dip the stuff uh if you wouldn't mind sharing how they go about doing it i think it would be beneficial to myself and to a lot of the community to finally figure this one out um because if and and if you're um in europe and you're thinking about ordering some of the american varieties of dry snuff just be prepared because i have had uh, now i have had silver dollar dark horse and crystals and i can say those are all much easier to work with and almost a whole different experience altogether used nasally than the american dry snuffs are um just gonna put that out there um and one final side comment is that I have been actually using this McChrystal's quite a bit and enjoying it quite a bit. I had reviewed it quite a while ago. I kind of make a point to use it once or twice a day. Not, you know, not crazy about it, but it is very nice. Um, and I would recommend if you're looking to get into dry snuff, this would probably be a fairly safe bet. It, it has some drawbacks, such as the can is just a lift off um so you you got to be careful with that a little bit but for the most part the product itself is fairly easy to work with i find um especially after some practice so as to not prevent going any longer and i will need to charge my recording device very soon that's going to be all for today shout outs to suit and tie dip and chew guy winnington outdoors dirty pat walsh wayside lee 83 oak tree dipper and no bluff buff um if you enjoyed the video leave a like leave me a comment if you have any info for me subscribe if you haven't already i will see you next time and take care